All right, so, um, happy another snow day, I guess. Um, so I'm going to make a video here about, uh, this is section 16.5, okay? And we're going to talk about strong acids, which this won't take very long at all. Um, so basically, strong acids, we've already talked about uh, so far this year, we, we've talked about strong acids, weak acids, weak bases, all that stuff just a little bit, way back in chapter 3 when we were uh, in the, the unit where we talked about aqueous solutions and oxidation reduction reactions. One of the sections in there was the acid-base stuff. Um, and one of the things I asked you to do was to memorize these seven acids right here. Okay? I guess we'll use blue today. Um, so those are the seven acids that I wanted you to memorize. Um, because those are the seven strong acids. Now, the um, I think I said this in the reading guide. The AP uh, course description does not include HClO3 as a strong acid. Um, it includes HClO4 and then all the others. So it gives you a list of six. Um, your book says that HClO3 is one. I, I would assume that since they're only giving you a list of six for the AP curriculum that probably you will not need to remember HClO3, but I'll give it to you anyway. Um, that one's usually considered strong as well. Um, so strong acids equal strong electrolytes. And if you remember, strong electrolytes means it completely dissociates when you put it into water. Okay. Um, so what that means is that the most important thing here is that if you want to know your H0 plus concentration, it's equal to your acid concentration. What that means is, let's say that I have um, 0.1 molar HCl. Okay, there's my concentration of HCl. Well, when that gets put into water, it immediately breaks apart into H plus and Cl minus. Okay, um, now granted when that gets put into water. Um, I mean, to have a 0.1 molar, it's already in water. But if I say that it's a 0.1 molar solution of HCl, so I put, you know, 0.1 moles into one liter of water, okay? Um, to say that is also to say that there is 0.1 molar concentration of H plus in the solution, okay? Also 0.1 molar concentration of Cl minus. Um, Cl minus doesn't really matter here. What we're concerned with is how much H plus or H3O plus is there in that solution, okay? So to kind of take you all the way through this and just make sure that it hopefully makes sense, we put HCl into water, okay? Uh, the reason HCl is considered a strong acid is because when you put it into water, it's almost immediately going to break apart. You've got your H plus, you've got your Cl minus. Then a water molecule comes along, and the H plus attaches itself to the water molecule to make H3O plus. Okay? But notice, everything that's happened here has happened in a one-to-one -one ratio. There's one hydrogen in the HCl molecule. There's one H plus here that connects with the H2O to make one H3O plus. So this is all one-to-one-to-one. -to -one -to -one, all right? So what that means is when I put... Uh, 0.1 molar HCl into water, okay? Or when I have a 0.1 molar solution of HCl, then I have a 0.1 molar solution of H3O plus as well. All right? That works for all the monoprotic acids. Now, you may not know what monoprotic means. Um, but you kind of look at the word. Mono obviously means one. Protic uh, means proton. It looks like proton. And remember, we said that H plus is basically the same thing as a proton. Because um, it doesn't have an electron anymore. It lost its only electron, and so now it's just a proton. All right. So monoprotic means any strong acids that only have one hydrogen. All right. Now that applies to all of them on the list except for H2SO4. All right. H2SO4 is a special case. We're going to have to talk about that uh, in the next section. Uh, when we talk about the, the weak acids, we're also going to get into polyprotic a little bit. Um, acids that have more than one hydrogen. Okay, so for right now, don't worry too much about the H2SO4. Um, the other ones are the main ones that you'll be given problems on when it's related to um, 
to strong acids. Okay? So here's an example of the kinds of things you might see. What is the pH of a 0 .040 molar solution of HClO4? All right, so we know the concentration of the HClO4. That is also going to be the concentration of the H plus or the H3O plus. All right, so I can just say right off the bat, and you'll like how easy these are, that the H3O plus concentration is 0 0.040 molar. Okay, well remember, pH is just the negative log of the concentration of H3O plus or H plus. So negative log of 0 0.040 and that's just like that, that's going to give you the pH, which is going to be 1.40 here, once you calculate that. Okay, um, now notice, there are two sig figs to start out with, so we need two decimal places in our pH. Okay, just pay attention to that because it's a little bit different. Remember, this first number doesn't count, uh, the number before the decimal or the numbers before the decimal, depending. Those are essentially just, um, those numbers are just telling you the power um, that this is raised to. Uh, again, an another way to write this would be um, 4 times 10 to the negative second, right? Um, which, actually, I guess doesn't work very well for this particular problem. It's a lot clearer when it's just a 1. Um, but point is, this, this first number is considered kind of a... It's just showing you what power the thing is raised to. All right, so the, the last two numbers are the ones that are really significant there. All right, so that's how you find the um, the answer there. And does it ask you anything else? Uh, no, I think that's it. Okay, so that's, you know, again, incredibly easy. Um, and it's because it just associates in that one-to-one -one ratio. Um, when this HClO4 breaks apart, I have to figure out a faster way to erase this stuff. When the HClO4 breaks apart, it's going to break apart into H+. Plus, ClO4, 1 minus. All right, so to say we have a 0 0.04 molar solution of HClO4 means that we also have a 0 0.040 molar solution of H+. Plus. All right, so that's why we can um, go straight to the pH formula. All right, second one. Uh, now we're dealing with a strong base. Okay, what's the pH of a 0 0.028 molar solution of NaOH? By the way, the strong bases... Um, it, it tells you in the book on page 680 uh, that there aren't all that many. Um, basically, it's the group 1A and the group 2A uh, elements are going to be the strong bases, okay? When, when combined with hydroxide, I should say. So notice here, you've got NaOH, okay? This is a strong base because sodium is in group 1 on the periodic table, all right? And then you've got CaOH2, again, a strong base because calcium is in group 2 on the periodic table. So basically, your group 1 and your group 2 elements are the ones that are going to tend to be strong bases. Um, and it does say in the book the heavier alkaline earth metals. The reason for that is because some of the lighter ones, like the um, uh, beryllium hydroxide and the magnesium hydroxide, are not all that soluble in water. So because they don't dissolve, um, then it can't be like a one-to-one -one correlation between their concentrations and um, and the, the amount of OH minus in the solution. Um, but any of it that does dissolve will completely dissociate for any of the group 1 or group 2. Um, and, and basically for anything in group 1, you can say that that's going to be a strong base when it's combined with hydroxide. All right? So hopefully that makes sense. Um, I think it makes a little more sense in the reading guide, the way that I said it. And actually, I think this is also a one of the AP um, essential knowledges that you're supposed to read, and it kind of clarifies that point as well. So, anyway, here's the problem. Uh, you've got a 0 0.028 molar solution of NaOH. Okay, so let's deal with that one first. So again, just to kind of review what we talked about before, this is going to split apart into a 1 to 1 ratio, right? So... Uh, Na plus, 1 Na plus, 1 OH minus for every NaOH. So if it's a 0 0.028 molar solution of NaOH, then it's going to be a 0 0.028 molar concentration of OH minus. All right? Um, so problem is the pH is the negative log of the H plus concentration. All right? Um, 
there's a couple of ways to go about this. You could plug into the, um, the KW equals H plus times OH minus formula and figure out what your H plus concentration is, then plug into the pH equals negative log of the H plus concentration. Okay? Uh, I think probably the better way, the easier way to go, this is the way that I tend to do it because it just uh, it seems easier to me. Um, find the pOH instead. Okay, the pOH is the negative log of the OH minus concentration, so uh, the pOH is the negative log of 0 0.028. And let's see if this is the way the book did it. Um, oh, actually, they show both methods as well. Um, so the pOH here, once you figure that out, is 1.55 for the sodium hydroxide. Um, and then all you have to do, the pH is going to equal 14 minus the uh, pOH, which is 1.55. Okay, so once you find that, it's going to be 12.45. And again, your final answer here, two sig figs after the decimal because we had two sig figs in our original concentration. All right, so 12.45. Now again, it's good to check yourself on these because it would be very easy for you just not paying attention to have plugged that 0 0.028 value into the pH expression and say that the um, pH of this thing would be 1.55, right? Well, if you stop and think about that for a second, uh, this is sodium hydroxide. This is a base. A base should not be giving you a pH lower than 7, all right? So this is a reasonable number, but this would not be for your final answer, okay? All right, now, the second part here, part B, is a little bit trickier, and you might not catch this at first, but we have talked about this earlier in the year, so hopefully I've set you up for this well, if you remember it. Um, remember I said that when something like this breaks apart, you're going to end up with Ca2+, plus and two OH minuses, okay? So... What we have to do here, if we're trying to figure out the concentration of the OH minus when it dissociates in water, it's actually going to be double this concentration. Okay, so we have to multiply that by 2. So our OH minus concentration here is actually 0 0.0022 molar. Okay, instead of 0, 0 point, or 0 0.0011. All right. So again, there's two ways to do it. I think I prefer just finding the pOH of this thing. Okay, pOH is the negative log of our OH minus concentration, which we found out was 0 0.0022. That's going to give us a pOH of 2.66. Okay, and then to find the pH, you just basically take 14 minus that number. And that's going to give you a, a pH of 11.34. Okay, and again... Uh, 11.34 is um, a reasonable number because we're dealing with a base here, so it should be a high pH. And once again, two sig figs after the decimal point in the pH, two sig figs to start with. Okay, And we can even check them against one another and see if they're reasonable. The NaOH, I got a pH of 12.45, which is a more basic pH, um, but it's a higher concentration of OH minus, 0 0.028 as opposed to 0 0.0022, okay? So it makes sense that the um, the pH of the calcium hydroxide solution would be a little bit lower, a little less basic than the NaOH, all right? So there's lots of ways you can kind of check yourself to make sure that everything makes sense. All right, I think that's pretty much it for this one. It's a pretty simple... Um, Pretty simple section uh, before we dive into some of the more complicated weak acid, weak base stuff. Okay? All right. We will see you uh, maybe in class tomorrow. I'm looking outside. It's really snowing now, so I'm not so sure. All right. We'll see you soon.